Anna Mae Bullock, better known as Tina Turner or simply as the Queen of Rock and Roll, passed away on May 24, 2023, at the age of 83. In her solo career, Tina Turner went on to sell more than 30 million copies of her 10 studio albums. She spent a total of 357 weeks on the Hot 100 with 37 singles, combining his solo recordings and duets with Ike Turner and Brian Adams. She reached the top 10 with seven singles, including the most awarded song of 1984, the same year she made one of the greatest comebacks in music history. Welcome to Tina Turner's Ultimate Countdown. This time we'll be counting down Tina Turner's top 10 hits in the US and UK, according to Billboard's Hot 100 and Official Singles Chart. Number 10. One of the Living. One of the Living was released as the second single from the soundtrack to the 1985 film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, the third film of the original Mad Max trilogy. It peaked at number 15 in November 1985, spending a total of 18 weeks on the Hot 100. It won the Grammy Award for Best Female Rock Vocal Performance at the 28th Annual Grammy Awards, the second in a row for Tina, as she also won it at the 27th Awards held in February 1985. Number 9. It's Gonna Work Out Fine. It's Gonna Work Out Fine was Tina Turner's third entry on the Hot 100, this time as a duet with then-husband Ike Turner. This single earned them their first Grammy nomination for Best Rock and Roll Recording and became the duo's biggest hit of the 1960s. Think it's gonna work out fine. It's gonna work out fine. It peaked at number 14 in September 1961, spent 15 weeks on the Hot 100, and was the 65th song on Billboard's 1961 year-end chart. Number 8. What You Get Is What You See. What You Get Is What You See was released as the third single from the 1986 album Break Every Rule. It was written by Graham Lyle and Terry Britton, the same writing duo that produced Tina's three biggest hits, including What's Love Got To Do With It. What You Get Is What You See peaked at number 13 in April 1987 and spent 14 weeks on the Hot 100, becoming the second biggest hit released from the album Break Every Rule, behind only Typical Male. Number 7. I Don't Wanna Fight I Don't Wanna Fight was released as the first single from the soundtrack to the 1993 autobiographical film What's Love Got To Do With It? It was the 42nd song on Billboard's 1993 year-end chart and the last top 10 hit of Tina's career. Really it peaked at number 9 in August 1993, spent 24 weeks on the Hot 100, and was Tina Turner's biggest hit of the 1990s. Number 6. Private Dancer Private Dancer was the fifth single released from the album of the same name. It was written by Mark Knopfler for his band Dire Straits but he considered the lyrics unsuitable for a male singer, so he gave it to Tina to record on her new album. Although he was the composer of the song and a great guitarist, Mark Knopfler did not participate in the recording of the single, leaving his place to the legendary Jeff Beck, who teamed up with John Ilsley on bass and Terry Williams on drums, both active members of Dire Straits at the time. I'm your private dancer. Private Dancer peaked at number 7 in March 1985, spent 18 weeks on the Hot 100, and was the 93rd song on Billboard's 1985 year-end chart. Number 5. Better Be Good To Me Better Be Good To Me was the fourth single released from the album Private Dancer. It was first recorded by the band Spider in 1981 but failed to enter the Hot 100 at the time. Oh, Tina Turner's version peaked at number 5 in November 1984, spent 21 weeks on the Hot 100, and was the 59th song on Billboard's 1985 year-end chart. Be it better be good to me. Tina won the Grammy for Best Female Rock Vocal Performance at the 27th Academy Awards, the first of two in a row, as she would also win it the following year with one of the living.
Number four, Proud Mary. It's the way we do. Proud Mary. Proud Mary was the second single released from the 1970 album Working Together. It peaked at number four on the Hot 100 two years after Creedence Clearwater Revival peaked at number two with the original version of the song, written by John Fogarty. Ike and Tina Turner's version was awarded a Grammy by the Academy, something that neither John Fogarty nor Credence achieved with their own version. That happened at the 14th Awards in 1972, when the duo won the gramophone in the category of Best R&B Vocal Performance by a Group. Rolling on a river, on the river. Proud Mary peaked at number four in March 1971. Spent 13 weeks on the Hot 100 and was the 55th song on Billboard's 1971 year-end chart. Number three, we don't need another hero, Thunderdome. We don't need another hero was released as the first single from the soundtrack to the 1985 film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, the last in the series to star Mel Gibson. It was Tina Turner's first single released from an album other than Private Dancer to enter the Hot 100 in the 1980s. We don't need another hero. It peaked at number two in September 1985, spent 18 weeks on the Hot 100, and was the number 57 song on the 1985 Billboard Year End chart. Number two, Typical Male. Typical Male was the first single released from the 1986 album Break Every Rule. It peaked at number two on the Hot 100, where it remained for three consecutive weeks: one week behind Janet Jackson's When I Think of You, and two weeks behind Cyndi Lauper's True Colors. The drummer on the recording of this song was none other than Phil Collins, who by then was already a megastar with five number one singles on the Hot 100. Typical Male peaked at number two in October 1986, spent 16 weeks on the chart, and was the number 71 song on the 1986 Billboard Year End chart. Number one, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it was the third single released from the 1984 album Private Dancer. Like we don't need another hero in typical male. What's love got to do with it was written by Graham Lyle and Terry Britton, who didn't write it specifically for Tina, but ended up producing her album and getting her to record it. According to Billboard, this was the second biggest song of 1984, behind only Prince's When Doves Cry. It was also the second longest-running song on the chart that same year, as it spent 28 weeks on the Hot 100, just two weeks behind Madonna's Borderline. This was the most Academy Awarded song released in 1984, as it won three Grammy Awards, including the two most important a song can get: Record of the Year and Song of the Year. What's Love Got to Do with It reached number one on the Hot 100 on September 1, 1984, when Tina was 44 years old, making her at the time the oldest female solo artist to reach number one on the Hot 100 in the chart's history. Tina Turner was also hugely successful in the UK, where she scored 35 top 40 hits, spanning from 1966 to 2023. Let's count down her British top 10. Number 10, Goldeneye. Number nine, I don't want to lose you. Number eight, I don't want to fight. Number seven, let's stay together. Number six, it takes two. Number five, the best. Number four, not Bush City Limits. Number three, we don't need another hero, Thunderdome. Number two, River Deep, Mountain High. Number one, what's love got to do with it? 
1984, at the age of 44, Tina Turner became the oldest female solo singer to reach number one on the Hot 100. She held that record until March 1999, when Cher reached number one with Believe at the age of 52. In an interview with CNN in 1997, Larry King asked Tina Turner if Europe was more supportive than the United States, and she replied, Yes, enormously. I'm as big as Madonna in Europe. Check out these other Ultimate Countdowns to learn more about the chart history of the greatest artists of all time and be sure to subscribe.